What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and today I'm going to be sharing with you a speed art tutorial where I show you guys how I go about creating a photo composite image or a photo manipulation. Now even though the video is sped up, I'm going to be narrating it so that I can try to explain my process to help you guys see what I'm doing and why. So let's jump right into it. Alright guys, so today we're doing another kind of speed art video, um, but this time instead of doing a logo, I'm actually going to be working on this photo manipulation. Now you'll see right here what I'm doing is just trying to isolate this dancer photo from the background. And one of the key things that I always do when beginning a project like this is just making sure that I take some time to try and find good images. Now a lot of people, you know, including myself, don't usually like to uh, pay for stock photos and things like that. So, um, you know, you can find some pretty decent uh, free stock resources out there, um, but it'll just take, you know, maybe take you a little bit longer to find the right kind of images. So, uh, for me personally, I use a deposit photos uh, subscription because I find that they offer a lot of, uh, you know, pretty flexible plans and things like that at a, a reasonable price. Um, but I would strongly encourage you guys, you know, especially if you're doing a lot of freelance work and client stuff to maybe look into getting a subscription. I, I do find that it's worth it and it'll save you time finding the right kind of images that you want to use. So um, once I'm isolating this subject from the background, I begin playing around with things like levels and contrast and uh, colors. And I'm, I'm separating, basically separating the skin tones from the color of the dress so that I can manipulate them separately and tweak them. All right, and that's done just using layer masks. Um, you know, and then you can kind of uh, add on adjustment layers and things like that and use the layer mask to, uh, you know, kind of confine the area to which you want to apply an adjustment, right? Like I'm doing here with the dress, I'm separating it and kind of painting in a mask so that I can have more control over the different parts of the image. And, you know, all I'm doing really is trying to find a nice kind of combination here, something that looks good with, uh, you know, the skin and the colors of the dress together. All right, so I'm spending a, quite a bit of time here just initially because this is going to be the focal point for my manipulation. All right, at this point, I bring the dancer image in as a smart object, and I begin playing around with the background. I realize that the forest image that I have is a little too short, so I actually extended the trees up a little bit and began painting in some highlights uh, into the background image and playing around with the levels um, and also adding in some uh, gradients set to overlay. Uh, to try and get certain areas to be brighter and kind of pop out. All right, so playing around with the uh, the composition a little bit and the placement of the dancer within you know the image and the composition here, um, I was kind of playing around with different shadows and seeing what it would look like if I made it appear as though uh, she's falling into the water. But uh, I kind of changed my mind after you know playing around with this a little bit and decided to do more of a floating kind of thing. All right, and I'm also kind of you know blurring the background in some spots, and uh, the way that I would do that is kind of merging the background and applying a blur, and then uh, do, applying a layer mask and kind of brushing out the areas that I want to be in focus, All right? So that the whole thing isn't blurred, but just the areas that you want to keep in focus, uh, kind of around the dancer and maybe the water. All right, I'm also trying to get kind of a cool, uh, you know, nice looking reflection going on in the water. But one of the difficulties with doing something like that is that, you know, you want the reflection to be somewhat transparent, so it's not uh, quite as dark and high contrast, but when you lower the opacity, you're gonna see, you know, the, the trees and everything behind it. So um, I kind of painted in some uh, just flat colors, sampling colors from the water around it to make that look a little more convincing. All right, and, and it's really kind of about, you know, trying to Get the levels to look right between you know your your focal point which is the dancer and the surrounding areas in the background you want everything to feel like it belongs together you know I see a lot of uh, photo manipulations and composite type of work where um, you know it's not really that convincing because you know everything is super sharp and maybe the colors are super bright or contrasty in one area but very dull in another um, it's important to try and create a little bit of consistency and a more of a uniform look across the board. 
Okay, so once I'm kind of tweaking the colors and the levels and everything, I go back to the dancer and I'm kind of trying to figure out where I want to place my lights because I want to make this uh, look a little bit more ethereal and kind of like a fantasy image. Um, but I also decided to change the bottom of the, uh, the foreground area basically. Instead of having the reflection in like a giant lake, I just kind of used this, this puddle here. So I actually brought in another image and blended it with my original background. All right, then I'm applying some overall kind of cast color onto the dancer, like a blue and some, picking up some of the yellow from the background. And I brought in this uh, moon image from another stock photo. And, you know, just kind of applying some outer glows and, and things like that, and then trying to tie it all together. I was playing around with, you know, some water ripples to see how that would look, along with the reflection and brushing in the reflection of the moon. And then, of course, adding a subtle co color overlay. Uh, like a blue color to try and make it fit in with the scene. All right, once I did that, I started kind of experimenting with, you know, adding little bits of yellow on top um, and, and little bits of blue and then doing some overall uh, color adjustments to see how everything's looking. All right, and you can do this, you know, with hue saturation layers, color balance layers. Um, you know, the adjustment layers are, are very versatile and you can do a lot with them, especially when you start kind of experimenting with uh, blending modes and things like that. All right, once you're pretty happy with it, you know, what I did is I went in and did some dodging and burning on the overall image to pick the areas that I wanted to stand out and some of the areas that I wanted to be, uh, you know, to push the shadows. Then I'm trying things with, you know, gradient maps and color fills set to different uh, blending modes as well. And also doing some overall curve adjustments, brightness and contrast. And another thing that I'll do here is I actually Applied some rim lighting on the dancer so the way that I would do that is to fill that selection with white and then contract the selection by a few pixels and blur it and set it to overlay all right and here you can see I'm experimenting with maybe grabbing some other kind of textures maybe some clouds or I use some uh, space dust from like a nebula photo um, and just applied a little bit of a motion blur to it to try and make it more interesting and add some motion to the piece and uh, what I was trying to do there for a moment was just kind of adding these kind of fragmented uh, bars uh, that I used from a merged background, but ultimately I kind of decided to scrap that. Um, it was a little too distracting. So what I did here is kind of going back into the original smart object and tweaking some of the layers a little bit. And now I'm kind of cropping the image to make it more uh, tall than it is wide. I just wanted to uh, keep it feeling pretty symmetrical and balanced and I felt like it was too much weight on one side of the image. All right, and now I'm just, you know, once again going back and experimenting with some of these color casts, um, as well as sharpening the photo in some spots. Okay, and from there I'm just kind of refining uh, things like the reflection, seeing what else I can add to this to make it look, you know, more convincing. Um, I even tried experimenting with some filters, but most of these um, I didn't end up using. I was just kind of seeing what they would you know, what they would look like if in different parts of the image. All right, and from here, I started to add some kind of like, you know, light effects and things like that. You know, it looked cool to me at first. I was kind of digging the idea, but then the more I got into it, the further away I started getting from uh, making this look, you know, photorealistic into more of a, a sci-fi kind of realm. So. Um, it's cool to just get in there and play around sometimes and, and really see what the possibilities could be. Uh, but ultimately, I, I kind of decided against this because it was taking me a little too far off of where I wanted to be. So instead, I decided to add some more kind of nature elements, like I'm just quickly cutting out a, uh, a deer or an elk or you know something like that. I think it's a deer. Um, because I thought it'd be cool to kind of show uh, you know this deer discovering this floating you know fantasy woman in the woods here. And it can be tricky when you add stuff like this in later on because the goal is to now make the deer blend in with the background that you've already established. So that requires making quite a few adjustments there as well. You know, I'm kind of lowering the opacity and blurring it. I'm trying to match the color to the background and the foreground. Um, you know, and this is, these are all just, you know, tricks and things like that that I usually do in my work. All right, and I'll also add, you know, just white gradients set to overlay or soft light bring out highlights in certain areas. And then I decided to add another uh, deer in the foreground and blur it a little bit. But once again, you know, I'm trying to match 
uh, match the environment, you know, to make it look like it's all happening in the same place because you don't want these things to feel too uh, disparate or, you know, have uh, dissonance where they don't feel connected, right? Because that's all going to take away from the believability of your scene or your, your composite. All right, so I think after playing around with this a little bit here, I decided to uh, kind of tone it down and, and eventually scrap all these uh, the highlights there, the, the light effects that I had. Um, but I did kind of find a, a color scheme that I was happy with, this kind of like yellow, reddish, uh, you know, blue, just like a nice feeling that you get from these colors. Um, and it's all just a matter of, you know, tweaking and taking your time and trying to make everything feel, you know, like it belongs together. So, you know, I really encourage you guys to, uh, you know, when you're doing these type of, of designs to take your time with it and play around and experiment and have fun, you know, because at the end of the day, if it's not fun, then, you know, why are we doing it? This wasn't a uh, client project, but just something I wanted to, to share with you guys to kind of show you the process that I go through when I'm doing these kind of images. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you do want to see more videos like this, uh, let me know in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel. And uh, maybe I can do some more videos like this for you guys. Um, but hopefully this has uh, shed some light onto uh, my process and hopefully it's been helpful in some way. Um, so as I said, you know, please feel free to uh, comment, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and sign up for the email list and be the first to know anytime some new content drops. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.